welcome to our first vi virtual Living in Faith Together program. Thank you for joining us in a new way of gathering. Um, for many of us, we have gathered on screens already, but this is kind of a different way for our um, adult faith formation, adult and youth faith formation and how to keep community together during these times of COVID. Um, again, this was the Christian Ed Committee back last spring when we were talking about how we would like to come together again this fall was picturing more in person, <laughs> to be honest, but because of the rise in numbers, we want to go back and forth. So we have different ways for people to be joining us um, who feel more comfortable virtually. And it is a wonderful tool and it does enable people to come in from different places and different time zones. And so we're gonna give this a try. And thanks very much to Jerry, who's gonna lead us later um, as we talk about the importance of gathering together. So we started last Sunday, if you were with us in person, with a gathering song. And the choir has very kindly recorded it for us. So we are going to listen and you can just listen, you can sing along, but this is our lift gathering song. So Eric, take it away. Praise, praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as I've said, Jerry's here with us to talk about what it means to gather. And we are exploring this month different ways of gathering. And since we're digital, we can do this in new ways. So I'd like to invite you to go to your chat, which on the bottom of your screen, there's a little menu board and in the middle it says chat. If you click on that, you can type a message and everyone will see it. What I'd love for you to type is a word or two that describes a gathering space. When you think of a gathering space, what word or two comes to mind? front porch, welcoming, open, yep, inviting, togetherness, comfort. Hmm. Um, where do I type? Cozy. So if right under chat, uh, you might have, let's see. All right, if you go to the bottom, you might have a two with an, um, semicolon and then you can adjust that to say everyone and you should be able to type your message here where it says everyone what do you do yep exactly yes, if it says everyone then type the message there and when you hit return everyone will see it oh i did i got green from david johnson that was for me Oh, thank you. <laughs> now here comes David's friendly. <laughs> Lots of people. Great. Inclusive. Yeah. Thank you for using this as a way to to chat and think about gathering space. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jerry, um, who's going to explore with us 
a little more what that means. And if your chat screen is in the middle of your screen, like mine is, you can just go to that little red dot and hit the X and it'll disappear. Okay. Wow. And so does everybody have my slides on? We yeah. do. Okay, great. Hi, um, I'm, what I'm gonna talk to you today is um, about gathering, gathering places. And, um, and the power of value gathering places to expand our faith journey. You know, gathering places have always been a part of Christian's faith from biblical times, from the image of Jesus teaching on the, uh, on the sea, that is a gathering place. So this little discussion today, we're going to sit, just kind of explore what's so special about ga gathering places and how they can be used on expanding our, our faith foundation. Let's see if I can change slides. Oh, okay. Mm. You know, to set the stage a little bit about it is last week we, uh, we, uh, we did a, a reflective exercise with, with the leaves. And it, it was recognizing I'm not being together for over 18 months. And you, you started looking, reading the leaves that were put on the fence as we did the exercises. And we found out uh, uh, a couple of things, just perceptions. And, and, I, and I, th I think the trend was really one we did not have ability to gather. Uh, we lost, lost a brother, lost a spouse, m missed spending time in church. But at the same time, today, we, we realized life slowed down and, and to be able to catch a moment. But I, I thought of the green, you know, among the green leaves were on about what do we learn for the future? And one of the things that we really found out is finding a better way to support people, for example, elderly, and that's one leaf. But you're able to support each other. And I think that really sets the stage a little bit about gathering, because gathering is not just gathering as one, but gathering with each other. So, uh, so when we, so this goes back to the idea of what living in faith together is. And so, uh, being an architect, I, I I have to start with a diagram. And so, if we kind of look at the diagram of what living in faith together is. If you looked at this low, the center of the target, you saw the colored ring. That represents our traditional programs that we've done in the past, Sunday school, virtual classes, children programs, mission, and, and uh, conversations in squared. And, and we, we, were, we were really focused more within the congregation. But we realized that really, if you think about living in faith together, it's more external. If you if you start going from the purple out to the uh, more of the gray and the white, that's the greater community. So what is the commonality between the scale between inward with ourselves to a congregation or community? It's gathering places. So to make that really be effective, we would really need to talk about this idea about gathering places and how do we make it in inclusive. Next slide. Well, you know, when you talk about gathering places, it's not really a, 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 comp, a really complex concept. It, uh, we've always had com, uh, com, uh, gathering places. If you look some of the history, even back Rebecca at the wall, uh, the, uh, the well, that, that well is when in communities in biblical times meant that always the well was a point of congreg uh, congregation, a gathering. The same thing, even the Lord's Supper, that was a point of a gathering, you come together, Jesus and the disciples. If you even look to more uh, colonial times, if you look in, I know many of y'all have been to Savannah, and Savannah was founded in the early 1700s, and the, and the community is, is organized around neighborhoods and squares. These squares are intentional gathering spaces. There's 21 squares that represent through the area. Each of these 21 squares were organized around for public gathering spaces around houses and community in the area. That was very important in terms of reflective of the community. If you look even today is um, just a, uh, about uh, two or three months ago, we were, uh, I was in DC 
and walk down uh, 15 and K Street. And they've actually converted some streets into public spaces and gathering areas. And, and actually, even this, these times of COVID, it was an area where you saw people to, uh, uh, to uh, relate to each other and smile and wave and even with a mask on. But gathering spaces can also be even more personal. Like if you go down this, uh, the street in the front porch, the front patio, and you're walking down the sidewalk and you see your neighbor down the street and, and, and you can just wave hi and that engagement between your families and other communities in the area, that's a form of gathering. And, and the unknown messages and the great and, and great communication be able to do that. They're all forms of gathering. And even today, like we have today, is another form of gathering with Zoom and electronic methods as well. And, and, the, and the key is it's really uh, how do we effectively uh, uh, use these, uh, these uh, places to be able to, to uh, expand our uh, uh, challenges of faith. Well, you know, all, all, I think all y'all know that I was, I've been an urban planner for all my life, master planner, and gathering places are really, really a, a big deal in terms of successful communities. And so if you go to a lot of the practices of urban planning, uh, the, the gathering places have some unique uh, 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 qualities to be successful. And many of you said this already in your, in your chat room, which is really, really good. We almost can pass the slide up because it says gathering places to be successful, they got to be sociable. They have to be able to uh, uh, create areas of diverse communication with people. They're neighborly, they're, they exude pride, they're friendly, interactive, and welcoming. So it, it really creates a, a place where people feel comfortable and social in that. Another part of a, of, a, of a gathering place, it has uh, diverse uses and activities. So it's, it's one that is sustainable, they, uh, uh, it's celebratory and real and, and, and active and fun and, and really it creates a diversity of activities so that the people can enjoy the place that they're in. And, and these, these areas can be small or large, but they all they have a, a functionality of a, a excitement. They're comfortable and, and create an image of safety. And what does it mean by comfort? They're clean, they're safe, they're suitable, they're spiritual, they're attractive, and they can be historic. And but really a place and comfortable that, that when you go to a gathering place, you really feel comfortable there. And I know that's kind of rhetorical, but that's it really, it really is. You feel and it's a nice place to be. And the last piece of it is access. It's access. It just cannot be a isolated area where no one can get to it. It's, it's, it's going to be connected. It's got to be connected either through a sidewalk. It can be uh, connected by a street. It's got to be connected by great electronics like we have here. But it, but the idea is to be able to be connected. And if all these qualities come together, we have a very effective uh, gathering space. And here's some of the images where we see in our neighborhoods, such as Caron Street and sidewalk, uh, sidewalk and a corner across from our church right there. But you know, gathering places are also good for our health. And, uh, and there's been a lot of uh, research in the uh, uh, medical field about the value of health, of gathering places in terms of healthy communities. Uh, they've actually, the National Institute of, of Health have actually found research that uh, that neighborhood natural spaces can reduce social and emotional and behavior difficulties in four to six year olds. Uh, the, and these spaces can be able to enhance kids level of attention. They can reduce their stress reductions and they can they create creativity and social interactions and challenging play and basically a better mental health. And we're talking about all types of kids as well as the picture says. So, if a, if a great if a great park can can do that, that can really help uh, help our kids as well. Um, but the other thing is, it's it's really finding out they've done other studies in parks, like in in um, in, in New Orleans, they have actually done a study of their parks and, and and the surrounding communities on ability to be able to be involved in groups. And they said one uh, areas that have connected parks they found that the local communities, there are more engagement 
into congregations, clubs, organizations, and basically a sense of community because people are connected to each other. And I, I know that sounds like it doesn't sound like it's, it's just a rocket science, but it's, it re, they really have to actually start seeing behavior in that area. So this, these area of gathering places are very important to all of us as well. But you know, it's all the gathering places are good for our mental and physical benefits. Many, you know, we, we, many of us who have dealt with overloaded minds, a lot of things going on, uh, a great park, a great gathering place can be able to reduce stress and depression. It can produce positive emotions and, 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 and actually help cognitive functioning. Uh, dementia patients have been shown to reduce the negative behaviors when given access to goal and environments. And, uh, you know, I've actually seen it in, in assisted living when you have patients going out there into the, in the backyard of the places, they actually, uh, they respond better as well. For, for challenges of interaction and not in isolation, uh, public places create a better community and they, and they actually help create the public realm. But this also can be your backyards, it can be your front yards, it can be your front porch as well. But it creates a, 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 a aspect of interaction as well. But it's good for sound body. You know, uh, we are, I think we all need uh, uh, improvements of our health. It, it, it creates an area to we can exercise more. People oriented streets, states, and greenways helps promotes a healthy lifestyle. We can be able to walk. But the key is, I think it's really interesting is what they found out. These parks and these gathering areas is not the one that has the structured ball field or the soccer stew. It's one of these unstructured parks that be able to open and flexible that you can have social gathering. And you can actually scale it to a, little, a group of two, a, 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 a community dinner, a area where you can dance, or you can area where you can throw a ball at each other. So that, that's, that's, they see these are the types of gathering spaces that are most successful. And, and, they, and they use the word sticky spaces to design these gathering areas because if they're sticky spaces, is basically people want to hang out there. They create a, a vibrant environment that promotes enjoyment and interaction. And, they, and it naturally creates a, a side benefit is social tolerance and learning from each other and, and seeing how people get together. And, and, but, and, the, and the key is, is, is some of the things that you have to do in design of this is called natural spaces. You know, we think about tree canopies, that's really shade. You know, if you look at a lot of the streets in downtown Fredericksburg, you have these great old trees that, uh, that over overlook the uh, parks and, and walkways. That creates a different kind of shade, basically a natural room that you can be able to enjoy the environment. It's cool, and, and but also gives some health benefits. So it actually creates a very sound community as well connected as well. Gallery places are not just for gentrified uh, economic development, it's for all, all, all people, all communities as well. And, and effective gallery places can, can be able to create a, a spirit of enclosure, such as you've seen this park on the left in Congress Square Park in Portland, Maine, uh, and we have a Hispanic community there, or in, in Columbus Park in, in, in uh, uh, an area where they basically uh, uh, re redone a, uh, a basically a parking space and now creates a community of uh, 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 different generations to be able to play cards and everything. But also this was on the one on the right was actually was it was in, in Columbus Park. I'm not Cl also in Columbus Park, but it was able to basically take over a green area and, and the community itself created areas for gaming and, and, and community and basically becomes a, a more welcoming area for all. So that's what a, that's a power of what gathering places can do to promote equity and inclusion in, in our communities. And, and the parks are not just a public function. Again. It's, it's, it can be volunteers. And, 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 it, and, and this is unified, not just the United States, but around the world. It was just amazing to me to see uh, some of the uh, research done in, 
the third world countries to be able to power gathering communities to make people's lives better. Uh, this area in Salanga Kabir, which is a is a uh, slum, uh, a very very bad area in terms of slum and economic depression over at and in in, um, in Kenya and outside Nairobi. There's over a million people in this area, and not a lot of goods. But but at the same time, they had a local project through a Kilimanjaro initiative, where the community itself, uh, folks basically redid the soccer field and basically created a a a, a function that the community can be able to do doing act, events and activities, and 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 just listening to some of the comments that that that, that some of the participants said is. The field became even more a safe focal point in community space, not only enhancing sporting talents among youth, but fostering community interaction, promoting safety, security, and peaceful coexistence. Now, if, if, if that we can do that in, in countries that are, have uh, economic challenges, is by just a public park, boy, what 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 kind of magic can we do? But also, it's the same thing as well as a lower, lower right with a with a park that a community had basically rebuilt themselves in in over in, the, in Brooklyn, and even in if you look in Havana, a park can don't have to be can be informal. It's basically taken over a street, close a street there, and the kids are playing on the street as well. So it's a it's the all ability to be gathering places. Gathering places bring communities together and they can work together and that creates an inclusive area for uh, basic opportunities of faith. So, so uh, I'm going to break in on you, Jerry. Thank you. And okay. Eric, can I ask you to put us in gallery view? As we look I think if you go to the top right hand corner, you can each change that on your okay on your own screen. I think yes. Uh -oh. okay. That's great. Well, that's research too. So, if we look at gathering places for building faith foundations at this slide, um, and now maybe if we. What we're going to do next is spend some time in what's called breakout rooms. And we will put you into small groups. This is the way that Zoom allows us to have some small group conversation. So you'll see in a minute, a little note will come up on your screen asking if you would accept going into the small group. So just click yes, we hope. And then you'll spend about five minutes. If you don't know people in your group, please introduce yourself um, first. And then we would like for you to talk together about gathering places for building faith foundation. Jerry has brought us through a whole lot about how gathering places are necessary for physical, emotional development, for inclusion, for equity. Have you thought about that for how it impacts your faith formation? So just talking that, how would gathering places impact your faith formation? Okay. I hope y'all, uh, Jen's little assignment um, helped y'all thinking about the power of gathering places and what can be uh, 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 used to help to, uh, expand our faith formation and, and, uh, and our journey in, in growing. And so I want to kind of walk you through some of the uh, great uh, gathering places. You can start seeing the diversity in spaces as well. So I, when I started doing this this journey, is first thing is our uh, places within our home, our neighbors, and the way we we live within each other. Do that 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 edge between us and our next door. That's a great uh, just a fence is can be a great place to be able for a great gathering space to, to talk to our neighbors as well. The other one, to, like to the right, is our front porches. And I, I really like this this, uh, this this image about our community because um, you know, many of us know I'm from Southwest Virginia and my 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 grandmother and my, all my aunts and uncles lived in in a hollow 
And my grandmother was on the bottom of the holler, and all the rest of my family lived up the up on the hill in the holler. Before everyone leave every day, my grandmother's house looked a lot like that, and they had stoops uh, stoops on the side with with the stairs. So grandma would have a cup of coffee ready, and 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 a, and a three dozen uh, homemade biscuits. So everybody would be unstopped on there. So my mom had about twelve brothers and sisters. They all stopped there. Still in the stoop, have their day before they go to work. And you talk about a community. You know, that's how you get everything connected. And no one would just see it. It was just the magic of the front porch, the steps, and the stoop. And, and, and that is a very powerful front page of, uh, area for gathering. Just think, how many houses today do we build with great front porches? That's, a, that's really something. Now you kind of go to a tour is, uh, I did a little uh, walking tour, taking some pictures of downtown Fredericksburg. And the one on the left, they say, this is Caroline Street. Why is that a gathering space? It's a gathering space because its way is designed. If you look at the street, it's very, the sidewalk is very wide. That allows for not just two people to walk, but three or four and you can be able to talk to different groups as well. Yeah. Also, because we talked about tree canopy, having those trees over there basically creates a room where, where you can mingle down the street and see everybody or talk to each other or just stop for a moment. Now, the idea about on-street parking, I know uh, a lot of folks would say that's not good, but actually it's very good because on-street parking allows actually a protection between the, the uh, people walking and the people driving through on Caroline Street as well. And, but also the little nooks on the side, some you know, steps, everything, that could be places where people uh, can stop and talk. That's all opportunities for gathering. The one on the right is, you know, we, this Rappahannock River Docks. And, and it's, it's not just, you know, we, when you look at that, that the, the walkway there, everybody looks out towards the river and seeing the people kayaking everything but it's really interesting if you look at that back there in the, in the side of the, of the dock back there a family was having a picnic mm -hmm. who would ever thought this little very active activity to the dock is also a personal space well you can basically block it off and have your own little little family as well and to me that was just very 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 nice and and that's another opportunity of gathering you know, uh, uh, going over to uh, Gore's co Coffee Shop, uh, many of us have gone in the behind there and seen that wonderful backyard of that long, the, the coffee shop, and see it's just a magic where people gather, have a cup of coffee, chat, chit chat, some working personally, some working together, some just uh, 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 just talking life away, but it's, it's really a, a, a very, very nice gathering space as well. You know, I, I, when I was doing this research on this, the word agora represents actually a gathering place. It's a Greek, it's a Greek word it's back in Greek, Greek, Greek times. So it's actually a coffee shop back called gathering. Gathering outside the courtyard Marriott. And what I like about this picture is not, is not just the sidewalk and people eating, but the steps. How powerful is just sitting on the steps and, and, and talking? That, that, that might could be a very serious conversation, but just pulling off a little bit to do it. They are all uh, opportunities for gathering. Now, I want to just tell you some of the, the that new park, Riverview Park, and I pulled some of the renderings from the architecture, architect, landscape architecture firm that did it. And, and if you kind of look at some of the areas, it, it has a lot of the features of what a great park is is, you know, if you kind of look at the rendering here, you have different opportunities for different type of activities. A person can have a looking out towards the river and the, and, and, uh, on the nat natural vegetation. You can have people riding their bikes along the sidewalk or a st uh, sitting point where people gather together. They can exercise. So you got basic diversity of, of use. Then you go look at another part of the same park, you see a different type of activity again, where people can sit down, maybe have a meal, they, they can play kites, or you can see activities as well. 
and looking at this idea about canopy about this. So you get to create a social uh, sociability of the space as, as well. And then you have, it's really inter, intergenerational because you can actually have kids playing in the sprinkler pool as well as uh, different types of play as well. And, and, and but it's, it's, it's a real active place where the community can come together and gather and connect it to the river. And that, that's really a very successful definition of the word gathering. So I've talked a little bit about gathering uh, and types of spaces we have and a lot of great spaces we have in Fredericksburg. But what are some of the activities that gathering places can do for us to, to expand our faith foundation? And one of the areas as simple is is to be able to do prayer walking. You know, we have meditation groups, but being able to actually have a deliberate prayer walking through, through neighborhoods, to be able to understand and the blessings of God creation. And it's very reflective. And I saw a lot of communities that have been doing that. And, and, and it's, especially with the fall coming in here, it'd be a very good opportunity to be able to be more connected. But the key to that is not just dialogue and just just two on a wall, but being able to be reflective, contempt, oh, be very sensitive <laughs> to the Holy Spirit at work, and being able to observe as you go through and look at God's work. So I think that's a, that's a one activity that you can see through effective gathering spaces as well. Another way is, is being able to broaden the get the uh, 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 faith through music and concerts, such as outdoor concert like the outdoor music at East Liberty Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, and being able to sing the, the, the joy of, of Christ through and having this music and be able to mm -hmm. to the broader community as well. So it also uh, Gathering places can be where to, uh, to spend service as well. Always like my Mr. Rogers, and he says, when you're a boy, I see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You always find people who are helping. And they can be in gathering places, such as uh, community dinners that we've been talking about to be able to connect with folks. Our, our street church to be able to, uh, to to disband the, uh, the word of the gospel uh, in, in that public space as well. These are just some of the activities that good effective gathering places can provide us all. So, Ms. Rowe. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Jerry. So, Look at our gathering opportunities. These pictures may look familiar to you. And we are going to go back into our breakout rooms and hope that you will spend some time talking together about opportunities of how we can learn what, apply what we just learned from Jerry about how we might use some of these spaces and you're not limited by these three pictures, but um, the spaces that we have on our church campus as well as the digital spaces that we're coming together today. How might we use these for gathering together for faith formation? So you'll spend some time talking about that in your group. And then when we come back together, we'll report back on, here's some of the creative ideas you all will have about how we might use some of these spaces. So off to your groups again. Um, so we'd love to hear a little bit from your groups. Did you come up with some different, unique, creative ideas for how to use our space? Well, we mentioned an outdoor labyrinth. Mm -hmm. They have mentioned David used to spray paint one, but he doesn't stoop over with the spray paint anymore. <laughs> um, I mentioned a fire pit. I just think it would be fun to have a fire pit and like sing Christmas carols around a fire. Yeah. Um, that would be a neat idea. I like that idea, Karen. Um, walking and praying. Mm -hmm. Like, if we could organize something, it'd sort of be like a labyrinth without the labyrinth. Mm 
Right. And the other thing, no, we talked a little bit, which is one of mine is I hope that our memorial garden will fundamentally be a gathering space. Mm. Nice. Well, we, uh, we, we mentioned the, that that process is in process. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> without anything more specific than that, since decisions will have to be made by someone other than the committee. But uh, yeah, it's, an, it's a wonderful dynamic in the work of that committee right now. So, in considering designs. So we, we heard, talked, go ahead. We, we talked as well about how we need to find ways of inviting the larger community into our campus. Yes. We tend to do things for ourselves on our campus, other than a few exceptions. Right. Meals for um, the community and some musical events, but mostly we don't. And we have an absolutely lovely location to do that. Yes, we do. We have the space and the location. Yeah, and if, if you look at the Google Earth uh, plots of the downtown churches, apart from the little bit of green that Fredericksburg United Methodist has, ours is the only sanctuary that actually has an island of green. Yes. So we're surrounded by color in our sanctuary. Yeah. All the other downtown sanctuaries are parked right on the sidewalk. Um, and it's a it's something we probably could expand on in the way that you just talked about. So we talked acoustically in our group that there's actually um, we have a natural, or, or I guess it's human-made now, um, acoustic hall uh, between the church house, the sanctuary, and the new uh, condominiums built across the street. Yeah. Uh, so we're really well equipped to do outside music in that space as well. Uh, and you know we haven't exploited that either, but that might get over in the direction that David uh, was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, bringing the community in. Hey, Diane? Could you could you still t talk about the your remembering of the Strawberry Festival? Oh, <laughs> that's very important. Um, well, I would like to say first that Jerry invited our group to. Uh, well, maybe it was when you were talking to the whole group. I'm not sure about what kind of magic can we make, and that right. just really that just really resonated for me. If we think, if we think in those terms, it can get pretty exciting. And all of the things I've heard so far have sounded pretty exciting. Uh, but what Jerry's asking me to share is that the, the little church in Allen, you may know where this is. in Windy West Gap. Alexander, Pennsylvania. Well, not actually not West Alexander, but West Finley. Oh, West Wind Finley. This is even smaller, folks. <laughs> this is even smaller and further into the, yes. yes. Uh, West Finley, Windy Gap sure. Church. I had a strawberry festival every year. And it was something that that the whole community looked forward to. And this was a small community, but people came from far and near to go to the Strawberry Festival. Yep. So it's just a memory that's etched deeply in me and what what these gathering spaces can mean to us and our children and our community. And our grandchildren. And our oh, grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing these things. I think we'll keep this conversation going at a, other times and um, because there's a rich wealth of ideas here. Um, Jerry has a few more slides to share with us. Okay. Okay, Jen, um, next slide. Just think about what we just did last week. Yeah. Mm, that's cool. So we have a lot of potential on backyard for gathering spaces and the power of that to, to improve our faith formation. So uh, in, in wrapping up our presentation today is um, um, we've recognized the power of a gathering place, what it is, where, where people can congregate. 
we recognized what are the qualities of a gallery places such as sociability, value of uses and activities that are diverse, a space that's comfortable and gives an image of safety and, and, and comfort, access to other things as well through sidewalks and walking and various modes as well, as well as electronics. We recognize it's, more, it's, it's good for our health as well and wellness, but they are gallery spaces to all. And then there are key locations for effective formation opportunities. And as you saw, I uh, see this slide, this is, these are all community tables. Come sit with us. And then that's the end of our presentation on gathering. Uh, up, up for any questions and discussion. Oh, that, that sign is uh, actually in a, a gore in the back room. And when I was getting a coffee, it said, community tables, come sit with us. I says, well, I got to use this as part of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Maybe if we go back to um, not sharing your screen, but come back into the- Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. And thank you so much, Jerry, for all your work on this. Yes. Thank Great you, girl. Jerry. Wonderful to thank you. That's a lot to think about. Great. Let's see how I can do that. Okay. I'm gonna figure out how. <laughs> thank you. Out. Thank you, everyone. Jerry and Jen and Eric. Um, there should be at the top of your screen. Got it. There, there we go. go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so we thank you for joining us, Virtual Lifts. Thanks to Jerry. Um, next Sunday, we'll, we'll be in person at 945. We are going to talk about the mission that our congregation has been doing during the pandemic. There's been some shifts and some changes, but um, some exciting new things as well. One of them, we even talked about in our small group, how that gate became a gathering place and a mission place where we brought the mittens and the hats and um, how that helped us be part of community together and our greater community. We will, as we began Lift with our gathering song, we end Lift with our litany. It's a responsive litany, and I um, ask you to join on the We Gather together. So if you unmute yourself and we can hear each other's voice, let's close with our litany. Living in faith together, love and grace, we, we gather, gather together with all people from all backgrounds, in love and grace, we, we gather. gather. In times of joy, in times of sorrow, in love and grace, we, we gather. gather. In all spaces, through all mediums, in love and grace, we, we gather. gather. Living in faith together, in love and grace, we, we gather. gather. Thank you, go in peace. And see you next time. Okay. Uh, That's good. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.